Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gail Hackett, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the ceremony that officially opens the academic year, Faculty Convocation. Let me begin by introducing those who share the platform with me today. I will ask the members of the platform party to rise as they are recognized and remain standing. Dr. Michael Rao, President of VCU in the VCU Health System. Marsha Rapley, Vice President for Health Sciences and CEO of the VCU Health System. Andrew Dare, Dean, School of Education. Joe DePiro, Dean of the School of Pharmacy. Barbara Boyan, Dean of the School of Engineering. Peter Buckley, Dean of the School of Medicine. Ed Acevedo, Associate Dean of Graduate Studies in the College of Humanities and Sciences. Cecil Drain, Dean of the School of Allied Health Professions. Sean Brixey, Dean of the School of the Arts. Kenneth Kahn, Interim Dean of the School of Business. David Surrett, Dean of the School of Dentistry. Doug Budno, Dean of the Graduate School. Barry Falk, Dean of the Honors College. John Acredino, Dean of the L. Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs. Jean Giddens, Dean of the School of Nursing. Tim Dale Davey, sorry Tim. <laughs> Tim Davey, Interim Dean of the School of Social Work. Shelley Fowler, Interim Dean of University College. And Rob Tomes, Vice Provost, ASU Life Sciences. Other distinguished members of our platform party will be recognized later in the program. Members of the Faculty Senate are also in the audience this afternoon. I will ask our new Faculty Senate President, Scott Street, and other Faculty Senate Committee members to please stand. We are also pleased to have a member of VCU's Board of Visitors with us here today, Dr. Shantaram Talagankar. Will you please stand? And would our past award recipients please stand? Thank you all for coming to celebrate the continued achievements of our fantastic faculty. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our president, Dr. Michael Rao. Thank you, Gail, Marcia. So I'm so pleased to have this opportunity to share the stage with you today. And it's always great to get together each time this year so that we have the opportunity to honor those who are really our most famous peers and uh, colleagues. And so today we'll honor specifically six people who are just so distinguished and are such an important part of this extraordinary faculty. Um, Supriyo Bandiopadai is a world-renowned researcher in electrical and computer engineering. He is a gifted teacher, he is a gifted mentor, and just an alacritous collaborator. He has exemplified excellence in absolutely everything he does, and we'll talk more about him later. Michael Neal explores very complex data to help his fellow human beings to live longer, healthier lives, and he shares what he learns with a world that absolutely needs his brilliant thinking and his great leadership. He's a remarkable scholar who does what's difficult. Marcus Messner. Uh, someone I've known for a while is a tremendous mentor in the classroom and a pioneer outside of the classroom. This is someone who helps thousands of students to find their calling and their place in their community. His legacy, of course, is a great generation of generalists. Journalists, well, maybe generalists as well. <laughs> journalists who will advance their profession uh, and preserve our access to news. Terry Dozier. Someone else with whom I've worked for quite some time. Um, where is she? Oh, there she is. <laughs> um, Terry has absolutely redefined the meaning of service in her incredible career, working to ensure that everyone in Richmond has access to life-changing education because they will have access to the very best teachers that they can possibly have at every level. 
She's a passionate advocate who has touched the lives of thousands of people, lives that will shape our world in profound ways. Just a tremendous national, if not international, leader. Pramit Nadpara is uh, only beginning his career, but he's already advancing human knowledge in pharmacotherapy. Um, and he's helping patients to gain access to the life-saving health care health care that they need. He's a brilliant and insightful scholar, and his positive impact has really just begun. Harinder Dinsa uh, treats our most critical, critical patients with most critical needs with uh, the kind of warmth and care and compassion that not only improves the patient experience, but it also helps to change their lives. And in making VCU a great place for everyone, he treats every one of us with that same compassion, has a warm smile, and he just cares deeply about us. He is a physician with skilled hands and a wonderfully warm heart. So these are six remarkable members of our faculty who, all join, who join all of you in helping to position VCU as a premier research university with a prestigious academic health center. Our faculty is innovative, our faculty is transformative, and we are all collaborative, and we're very, very proud of it. Together, across a wide range of disciplines, we're working together to help reshape higher education in the 21st century and to help redefine what it means to be a research university in the 21st century. And you think about it, the positive impact that you as a faculty, that we as a faculty make uh, across this commonwealth is just tremendous and, of course, increasingly important as the human experience continues to evolve. As a research university, we change the world by what we do at this institution every day. Of course, through our teaching and our mentoring, we help students to be their very, very most successful and to be their very, very best. Not in, the, not in, not in Richmond, not in the Commonwealth, but in the world. Our research tackles the very most difficult and vexing human problems. And it's focused increasingly on those problems that matter most to human beings. Innovation and creativity that unlocks human potential. Engagement that makes our communities stronger. And of course, we're committed to cures. We're committed to understanding what causes disease, but also cures that save lives and that help move us forward. You know, as a research university, we have to continue to be mindful of the fact that we are leading in a very, very challenging time. You'll meet people and work with people who have very different views from yours. I've been saying this all week to students and been and encouraging our students to understand that in our country, we all have the opportunity to speak our minds and to talk about what our Constitution allows. It does indeed allow for free speech, and so I want to share with you a little bit of my own free speech, which is in light of a lot of the things that have gone on in the last week or two, I want you to know that in speaking for myself and certainly for VCU, which I'm given the privilege of doing, I absolutely abhor racism, I abhor anti-Semitism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, sexism, genderism, ageism, and religious intolerance. I will not accept these anywhere at VCU. And violence or discrimination toward others simply because of who they are is just simply unacceptable at our institution. So as a faculty, I call upon every one of us to come together to address the most challenging issues that we face as human beings and to do it together. We have a vision of what the human experience needs to be and we need to share that vision and continue to live in ways that enable us to be very strong in our, <clears throat> strong in our commitment to ensuring that we realize this vision for the human experience. Well, from this point, I look forward to honoring my six uh, colleagues who are wonderful examples of the kind of commitment that I've talked about today. And I thank all of you for gathering together to help join in the celebration of our most stellar colleagues that have been selected this year. Thank you. Thank you, President Rao. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Dean Barbara Boyan from the School of Engineering. 
Dean Boyan, will you please introduce the recipient of the 2017 University Award of Excellence? Thank you, Provost Hackett. It is my pleasure to present this year's University Award of Excellence to Dr. Suprio Pandio Padahe. He is the Commonwealth Professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering in the School of Engineering. Here is a short video in which Dr. Bandio Padahe talks about his research and experience here at the university. VCU School of Engineering is a small engineering school. Uh, you actually get to know people much better. I chanced upon a couple of colleagues who had interest in magnetic materials, whereas my interest was in computers. I studied electrical engineering, but the areas of electrical engineering that I studied were very close to physics. Maybe we could come up with something new and uh, better than what we could have individually done. We take a nanomagnet and we shape it like an ellipse. And if you shape it that way, then the magnetization of a nanomagnet can have only two stable directions. The one pointing to the right encodes the bit one, and the one pointing to the left encodes the bit zero. Any type of digital signal processing really involves switching between one and zero. Wherever you have any kind of computation, this field could benefit. It benefits computer hardware, makes it more efficient. VCU has had an effect on this because I would not have met him if, I was, if both of us were not at VCU. We are really proud of Dr. Bandio Padahe's lifetime work and honor his many achievements today. Uh, President Rao, would you please escort Dr. Bandio Padahe to the podium to accept this award? They're there. <laughs> I'm coming. Yes, right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let me begin by thanking everybody who's actually responsible for this award, which are my colleagues, my students, and of course my family. Um, very fortunate to have colleagues who stimulate me, students who teach me, and family that inspires me and supports me. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering with a courtesy appointment in the Department of Physics. My areas of research in electrical engineering and physics are two items, strain-tronics and spin-tronics. And if they mean nothing to you, and they probably shouldn't mean anything to you, let me explain what they are. Spintronics is the science and technology of using certain physical properties of fundamental particles like electrons to store, process, sense, and communicate information. Straintronics is an offshoot of this field, which was really developed in my lab and the lab of one of my colleagues in mechanical engineering. And it deals with tiny magnets about 1,000 times smaller than the diameter of human hair to make extremely energy efficient information processing systems like computers, laptops, iPads, cell phones, and medically implanted devices. <clears throat> now, one of the things that we have done in our lab is try to make these things in a very economical way. So the result is that we have been able to pack billions and billions of these devices into electronic gadgets. And that makes the devices faster, cheaper, and better performing. The cheaper is very important. Many of the remarkable advances in medical science that you hear of today make absolutely no difference to the vast majority of the population on this planet because they have no access to health care and cannot afford to pay health insurance premiums. Similarly, an electronic gadget that is 
very fancy and makes life very comfortable. It would mean absolutely nothing if it was affordable to only a tiny fraction of the world's population. Fortunately, electronics has always been motivated by a desire to make things more accessible. Today, rural farmers in emerging economies can get real-time information on their farm market prices of their farm producers using their cell phones. They may not have a car or even a tractor, but they have a cell phone. That is something that has empowered them. And what has motivated, informed, and guided my research is to do exactly that, make things cheaper in a more efficient way so that they become more accessible. After all, science is never for the 1%. It is always for the 100%. Today, there is a need for millions of infrared photo detectors across the planet to monitor the effects of global warming. Infrared detectors measure heat, and therefore they're very good for monitoring the effects of global warming. Believe me, no matter what you may have heard, global warming is not a hoax. It is a reality, and it is a very potent threat to the survival of mankind and womankind. But infrared detectors that monitor global warming will have to be cheap, they have to be robust, they have to be reliable. In my lab, I make these infrared photo detectors in a new kind of way. I make them using high school beaker chemistry, and they're made by high school students who intern in my lab during summer, and then they go on to win international science fair competitions with their infrared detector projects. My infrared detectors they cost fractions of a cent as opposed to a dollar or two. So they make them, that is what makes them accessible and can be used worldwide. I think I'm nearing the end of the three minutes that I was allotted to tell you <laughs> what I do and why I do what I do. So I think I'm going to stop here and I thank you very much for listening. School of Medicine, Dean Peter Buckley will now come forward to introduce the recipient of the 2017 Distinguished Scholarship Award. Thank you, Pearl Vosakis. Good afternoon, everybody. It's, a, um, it's just a real delight to present this year's Distinguished Scholarship, our Distinguished Scholarship Award to Dr. Michael Neal. And Michael is Professor of Psychiatry, Human Genetics, and Psychology at VCU School of Medicine. And he also serves as Associate Director of the Virginia Institute for Psychiatric and Behavioral Genetics. Uh, just like the prior uh, recipient, we have the opportunity to hear a brief video uh, regarding Michael's work and also how um, VCU has assisted his work. So let's hear to that, and then we'll call Michael to the podium. Mostly what I want to help understand is how the brain works, substance use and psychiatric disorders. Um, these are enormously damaging conditions. These disorders are actually influenced by hundreds or thousands of genetic factors and similarly um, sort of hundreds or thousands of little events in the life history and they can accumulate to a point where somebody's going to have um, major problems with, say, depression or substance use. Tracing the entire pathway from genome or from environmental event to outcomes on behavior and health is really the optimum way to go. I've been developing software to try and help people uh, get the most out of their data. VCU had the good sense after I'd been working with one group for five years and another group for five years to combine them. It's not the kind of thing that happens at every institution. It's uh, a really multidisciplinary team that we have. It really makes all the difference. Congratulations, Michael. Come forward.
don't panic, I only have three remarks. <laughs> First, I would like to thank the many people and institutions who helped me win this award, especially my family, colleagues, advisors, students, the OpenMX team, twins, and all those who wrote such nice letters of support. VCU, my department, and NIH, particularly NIDA, NIMH, and OBSSR, were and continue to be invaluable in their support. Second, at any point in history, it is a great privilege to work as an independent scientist tackling major health and social problems facing our species and planet. My work involves developing tools to analyze data accurately so we can obtain clearer insights into cause and effect. I hope that these tools will be further developed and applied by future generations of researchers and that many of our problems will be solved. Third, to quote Thomas Jefferson, reason and free inquiry are the only effectual agents against error. We must, therefore, always be wary of political leaders who act unreasonably, deny the truth, and attempt to silence the free press. Such leadership will commit errors that are likely to be fatal for many. Now, as you combat error, I recommend focusing on the issues, not the person nor their group membership. For once an argument turns ad hominem or ad feminam, both reason and the cause are lost. We, the people, are too valuable for that. Thank you. I would now like to introduce Ed Acevedo, Associate Dean in the College of Humanities and Sciences. Dr. Acevedo, will you please come forward to introduce the recipient of the 2017 Distinguished Teaching Award? Thank you, Provost Hackett. It is my pleasure to present this year's Distinguished Teaching Award to Dr. Marcus Mesner, Associate Professor and Coordinator for Research and Innovation in the Richard T. Robertson School of Media and Culture. And of course, here is a short video in which uh, Dr. Messner will talk about his passion for preparing future journalists and indeed communicators. I worked as a journalist myself, so I covered uh, politics and business. When I entered uh, academia, it was important for me that uh, my students get uh, practical experience. The goal is to have them ready on day one when, when they become journalists, when they become communicators. It's really important that in the current media environment that we have where so much fake news is flying around in this media environment that they are critical, that they are able to evaluate information so they're getting the story right and uh, that they're actually contributing to the public discussion. We need to journalists that are taking their role in a vibrant democracy uh, series. The contribution that we can make as journalism professors is to educate the next generation of journalists that then contribute to society. VCU allows professors to, um, to really pursue the things that they are passionate about and to be involved in the community and I've been here for 10 years. I'm not even teaching any classes that I haven't created myself that I put on the books. So that's a very, very encouraging and rewarding um, environment. For His Excellence in Teaching, the College of Humanities and Sciences is pleased to honor Dr. Mesner today.
Well, thank you so much, uh, Dean Acevedo. Um, it's such a great honor to be standing up here with all of these uh, distinguished colleagues here at VCU. Um, thank you so much, President Rao and uh, Provost Hackett, uh, for making VCU a place where we can combine teaching and research and really involve ourselves um, in our communities and make a real life impact. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, my director in the Robertson School, Dr. Hong Chang, who's been really such a great supporter for all of my projects uh, that I've done here, um, from my iPad Journal's reporters um, to the Social Media Institute. And thanks to Dean Monsi Fuentes as well, who nominated me um, for this award. I have so many great colleagues um, in the Robertson School and in the College of uh, Humanities and Sciences who really make a difference uh, in VCU students' lives every day. So thanks to all of you uh, for being great colleagues and for all the support um, that you have given to me. Um, I'd also like to give a shout out to uh, all of the institutions that help us be great teachers um, here at VCU. I could really have not done it without the Center for Teaching Excellence, the Global Education Office, the Division of Community Engagement, the Honors College, and the VCU Globe. Um, with their support, I was able to innovate in my classroom and expand my work globally. Um, when I reflect on the 10 years uh, here at VCU, I have to say it's been really exciting and rewarding to be part of this media revolution. It has been just a whirlwind um, this last decade. Um, when I first came here, um, we were studying the impact of, yes, MySpace. Um, remember that? And uh, we did this cutting edge journalism thing called blogging. And so now, um, now we are in a media environment where Facebook and Twitter are old social media and uh, students are developing mobile get out the vote campaigns on Snapchat and they're doing global health campaigns um, on Instagram. So as you can see, it's been a really disruptive um, classroom environment for these last um, 10 years. Um, in all of these projects, I really feel that I learn as much from my students um, as they do um, from me. So I want to thank all of my VCU students uh, for inspiring me to be a better professor um, every semester. And I'd also especially like to thank all of the Iraqi students um, that have studied with me through the um, Iraqi Young Leaders Exchange Program um, since 2010. And it's been really an honor um, to have them here um, at, uh, at VCU. Um, while all of the work that I've done here the last 10 years has been really rewarding for me, um, I actually see the months and years ahead as the most challenging period uh, for me as a journalism educator. I could have really never imagined um, that reputable media organizations in this country uh, would one day be accused of being crooked, fake, and the enemies of the American people. Um, so I will take this award um, as additional motivation to educate young journalists who, when they graduate here, are ready on the first day to perform in this very challenging information environment. They will be able to seek the truth, call out the falsehoods and the lies, report the facts so that the public can make informed decisions. Because when a, when a, without a strong fourth estate, democracy can be really severely weakened. So please, all of you, please support real journalism, journalism education, and our important mission. It's really vital um, for this great country. Um, as I close, um, I'd like to thank my parents, who actually can't be here because they live in Germany, um, and they're watching this, uh, this live stream from Germany. When I was a teenager, um, they encouraged me to come to this great country and to spend a year here by myself uh, in a host family um, in high school and to experience this great country uh, for the first time. And then finally, I'd like to thank uh, my wife Vivian, my daughters uh, Rebecca, Valentina, and Sophia, uh, who are here with me today. And uh, I would not be able to do all the things that I do without your support and love. Thanks, everybody. Well, good afternoon. I'm Marcia Rapley. I'm uh, Vice President for Health Sciences and CEO of the VCU Health System. And it's really an honor to be part of this event today, recognizing um, 
our faculty who bring their talent and their passion, and we've only heard half of it so far. So I'd like to invite um, Dean Andrew Dare to the uh, podium. He's Dean of the uh, School of Education, and he will introduce to you the recipient of our 2017 Distinguished Service Award. Thank you, Dr. Happily. It is my honor to present this year's Distinguished Service Award to Dr. Terry Dozier, Director of the Center for Teacher Leadership and National Teacher in Residence and Associate Professor in the VCU School of Education. Now please join me in viewing a short video in which Dr. Dozier shares the origin of her passion for service and the, trans and the transformative power of education. My passion for serving others really started in an orphanage in French Indochina where my brother and I were the first Vietnamese children ever adopted by Americans. And I was brought to this country as a young child and given a second chance at life and in particular an outstanding education. I might not even be alive today had I not been adopted and brought to this country. Becoming a teacher was my way of repaying a debt to the society that's given me so much. Here at VCU, I direct the Center for Teacher Leadership. The work we're doing in the Richmond Teacher Residency Program is lifting up our city from inside the classroom. And developing the next generation of teachers is perhaps the most important mission that our democracy has. I see our work as really um, having the potential to transform lives from poverty and hopelessness to opportunity and promise. And I've seen that in my own life. Every child, no matter what circumstance they may be born into, deserves the same opportunity that I have received. Today, we're proud to honor Dr. Dozier's outstanding accomplishments in service. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I first want to thank um, my husband who is here and has been a strong supporter and, and family and, and friends. My daughter couldn't be here. She's in London, but um, I'm actually going to get to see her in two days um, visiting her uh, in Europe. But I, I just want to start by saying that it has been a humbling experience for me to have the chance to reflect on the impact of my life's work. So I want to thank my colleagues and the many people outside of VCU who supported my nomination for the 2017 Distinguished Service Award. I have the great honor of being the public face of the wonderful work we do in the VCU School of Education. But my accomplishments would not be possible without the dedication and hard work of many, many others, and many of them here today. I'm proud to be in a profession in which my colleagues are deeply committed to making a difference in people's lives, and to be at a university whose mission is to serve our community and to tackle our society's most vexing problems. Located in the heart of Richmond, where many students and faculty members come from different backgrounds and bring their own cultural experiences to the table. I believe VCU is uniquely situated to be the pioneers, the innovators in addressing these challenges. This work is messy, it's difficult, and it is critical to the future of our city, our state, and our nation. As a high school teacher, I urged my students to make choices that would enable them to look back on their lives and answer positively the question, what did I do that made a difference? I wanted them to know that we all have the potential 
to make a difference. In fact, an obligation to give back to our communities and to those less fortunate. And there is no more important place that we can make a difference than in strengthening public education. Through the preparation and ongoing support of K-12 teachers, we do that. As the late John Stanford, a retired Army general and the superintendent of Seattle Public Schools often reminded his community, the victory is in the classroom. And make no mistake, there are no shortcuts to this victory. It will take hard work, dedication, resources, perseverance, and a relentless focus on ensuring that every child, every child has a talented, dedicated, and well-prepared teacher. I believe that through the innovative work of our Center for Teacher Leadership and the Richmond Teacher Residency Program in recruiting and preparing highly effective teachers for our most challenged schools, providing clinical placements for VCU pre-service teachers with outstanding K-12 educators, developing teacher leaders, and promoting teacher retention, the VCU School of Education and its partners are helping to secure our future and to win this victory. It has been my privilege and honor to help lead this work. Thank you. Our next award is our 2017 Outstanding Early Career Faculty Award. And I would like to ask the Dean of our School of Pharmacy, Dr. Joe DePiro, to come forward and introduce this year's recipient. Thank you, Dr. Rapley. It's my honor to present this year's Outstanding Early Career Faculty Award to Dr. Pramit Nadpara. He's assistant professor in the School of Pharmacy's Department of Pharmacotherapy and Outcome Sciences. And here is Dr. Nadpara's video where he talks about his research and work to improve healthcare. There are so many challenges in the current U.S. healthcare system. There is a big gap between what we can achieve quality and cost-wise and what it currently delivers. If we look at the literature, it shows that there's wide disparities in what care people receive, what we may do to address those factors to remove those disparities. When we talk about evidence-based care, it's based on what the evidence uh, literature suggests. In the literature, we see that there is variability in uh, adoption of those evidence-based guidelines. To figure out what are the reasons behind those inconsistencies is something that I normally study. I joined BCU because of the amount of openness and collaborative nature that I saw within the school and outside the school as well. One of the grants that I have is uh, working with other uh, faculty within the school who bring in clinical expertise uh, and me bring in the health outcomes research expertise. It's hard to find an environment where people are more open and willing to collaborate and that's something that definitely is important research-wise. Well, thank you, President Rao, Dean DePiro, colleagues and friends and family here in the audience. I'm greatly humbled and honored to be standing here today receiving this award. And I would like to offer my sincerest gratitude to the entire School of Pharmacy for choosing me as their nominee for this award. As many of you know, I did not make this journey here alone. And it wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for all the amazing people at the school and at the university. 
Specifically, in my short time spent here at the university, I had had wonderful support from our dean, Dean Tapiro, my department chair, Dr. Donald Brophy, and other administrators and faculties at the school, and especially from my students. I would not be here today without all that support and encouragement, and I sincerely thank everyone who is here. It really means everything to me. Last but not least, I would like to thank my parents and other family members for their unending support. Being at the early stages of my career as an academic researcher and an educator, an award like this truly confirms my strong belief that my experiences to date have led me to exactly where I should be. And I very much look forward to my productive, more productive years here at the university. In conclusion, I want to again say how grateful I am to receive this award, especially knowing that I work every day with other junior faculties who are equally deserving. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart for this great honor. Thanks. And for our last award this afternoon, I'd like to ask uh, Dean Peter Buckley to uh, come to the podium and present the 2017 Outstanding Faculty Award. It's a delight to present this year's Outstanding Term Faculty Award to Dr. Harinda Dinser. I get my start as an emergency medical technician. <laughs> he is a fast starter. H.D. is Associate Professor and also Chief of Emergency Medicine in VCU uh, School of Medicine. And you will hear this video again, but you'll hear it to completion this time around. Roll it. I got my start as an emergency medical technician back in college, and so I was a volunteer EMT. And so that's what really sparked my interest in emergency medicine. You're trained to deal with anything that comes through the door whether it's in the pre-hospital environment or in the hospital. The prime directive in my mind is really to train our future physicians in terms of our emergency medicine residents. And the second is to extend our care and our training to the pre-hospital personnel, our EMTs, our paramedics. They're really the first point of contact for most of the emergencies that come through the 911 system. VCU is unique in that it is committed to community engagement and education. We're able to take what VCU has to offer in terms of training our future physicians and future providers and really extend that throughout the Commonwealth. And this is a team effort. This is the entire Life of Act team that goes out and does this training. Volunteer rescue squads and fire departments in the rural areas. Most of these folks are doing this on their own time. They're trying to protect their community, be a resource for their community, but they don't have the training resources. And that's where we've been able to really partner effectively. We're going to help them make a difference in patient outcomes in their communities. Please join me in congratulating HD. HD? Thank you. It uh, is truly an honor to receive the Outstanding Term Faculty Award, which recognizes a faculty member who has achieved superior accomplishment consistent with the quest for distinction in the areas of service and teaching. Service and teaching, however, are not solitary independent activities that take place in a vacuum. I think we've heard it today from a number of the other honorees. Um, rather, they are reflective of broad, often multidisciplinary activities and effort that promote teamwork, critical thinking, and accomplishments of specific goals. I am fortunate in my various roles at VCU to work with so many eager, talented, and motivated colleagues from many disciplines. As an example, I was privileged to work with a team that developed and started our emergency medicine residency. That single act transformed emergency care throughout Central Virginia, and it transformed emergency care from how it previously used to exist so that now in almost every emergency department through the Commonwealth, we have board certified, highly qualified emergency physicians, many of whom trained with our program. As medical director for our critical care transport team, VCU Life of Act, I've had the good fortune and privilege to facilitate opportunities for our team to develop a very robust outreach education program. 
This program provides education for EMS personnel, firefighters, school groups, and communities that have identified specific training needs that would otherwise go unmet. These agencies and schools are located throughout Virginia, including many of our underserved areas, that, we do not have, that they do not have the resources for to provide this type of training. Through these efforts, we've helped, multiple pro, uh, we've helped provide the knowledge and tools to positively impact health outcomes in these communities. And in addition, Life of Act crews provide life-saving care on scene as well as through inner hospital transports. They have not only helped reduce disparities in health care in the rural areas of the Commonwealth, they have raised the bar nationally for critical care transport standards. As the chief of emergency medicine with strong support from health system leadership, I've had the very good fortune to jointly lead a multidisciplinary effort along with our director of nursing, Dr. Kathy Baker, and as well as our PharmD, Dr. Tammy Nguyen, that is transforming emergency care at VCU, and we are very excited about this. We're excited about what the next several years are going to bring. I could give examples of how I may have inspired people over the years, but the reality is, in so many cases, my students and other learners have inspired me to achieve more and to be better. I would like to thank my parents who came down from Maryland, as well as my family, for their unrelenting support of my professional pursuits. And finally, I would like to leave you with a quote. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do, by Bruce Lee. Thank you. So I think that many of you share my sense of humility today as we've heard from these six individuals and their commitment to making a difference in the lives of others, to taking their knowledge of science, of arts, their hard work, their creativity, to really making lives better. They are tackling the most difficult things that plague us, both as individual people, but also as a society. And they are here among us, inspiring us every day. I also feel that it's a great privilege to be part of a university that not only acknowledges and celebrates these kinds of, of accomplishments, but it celebrates the pursuit. And not everybody can be on the stage winning an award but everybody can be striving in the example that we've seen from these people and their dedication to their uh, talent, to furthering their education of their students and themselves, to making their science go that last step to truly making a difference in the lives of people around us and the people of our world. So at these moments, it's really wonderful to reflect, as, as uh, was said earlier about why it is we're here as a university and what is our purpose. And I think that it's a proud moment when we see how we've done well as a university, at least through these six people. So I uh, would like to ask you to join me in, in congratulating and applauding these folks uh, all together one last time. And I'd also like to thank our musicians today. Uh, we have the VCU Convocation Brass. Thank you very much. And that brings us to the close of our ceremony. So I'd like to ask you if you'd please remain seated while the um, uh, folks on the stage exit, and then join us afterwards for a reception in the lobby area. Thank you very much. <laughs>